Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, graph our two functions. Uh, let's see, when given here we have some transformations. Here I have y equals 3 times sine of 1 half x. And also I have y equals negative 3 of sine of 2 pi x. Now, What's important about this is, you know, last time we just dealt with the amplitude. Well, now we're going to be dealing with the amplitude as well as amplitude, period, and phase shift. So it's very important, again, to just kind of go back over to them and understand, well, what are they and where do they come from? So what I have here in the black is graph y equals sine of x, which is just going to be our parent graph for the sine function. Um, you can see that the amplitude, again, is the half distance between our maximum and our minimum. So if there's no vertical translations, you can see that basically the amplitude is the distance from 0 to the max to the min, which in this case is 1 since that is going to be our a. Uh, the period is going to be how long it takes the graph to complete one revolution. So you can see it starts at 0, um, goes up, goes down, goes up, and then it completes one revolution. So that it takes 2 pi for it to complete a revolution. And we'll go over how to determine that. And then the last thing is the x scale, which is going to be basically the diff distance between each and every critical point. So when we look at the period, there's four critical points we have, the maximum, the intercept, the minimum, and um, the intercept again. And you can see that the distance between each of these critical points is actually five critical points, but the distance between each of these critical points is going to be pi halves, which we call the x scale. So there actually is a formula for us to be able to determine the amplitude, period, and x scale for our problems for us to graph. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to identify that information first, then I'm going to graph it. Now, I do have two graphs here. One graph is I'm going to graph two periods to the right, starting at the y-intercept of 0. And then the other one, I'm going to start at the y-intercept of 0 and graph a period to the right and graph a period to the left. Okay, Just so you can kind of get an idea of two different ways to be able to do it. Um, just notice that the scaling that I did for these two graphs is not the same as the parent graph, because I am using two periods. All right, so the first thing we want to do is always identify the amplitude. Now remember, the amplitude is the absolute value of a, which in this case is going to be 3. That's going to tell us how high we're going to go up and go down from 0 as long as there's no vertical translation. So I'll go up 1, 2, 3, and go down 1, 2, 3. Again, that's 0. OK, now the next thing we want to do is determine, well, how long is it going to take for our, the graph to complete one revolution, which is our period. So our period is 2 pi divided by b. Now, what is b? So as you can look in this equation, um, I have y equals sine of x. Well, a represents what you're multiplying by the function. b is going to be represented what you're multiplying by your x inside of the function. So in this case, you can see I'm multiplying 2 pi by 1 half. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half. Now, whenever you have a fraction in your denominator, um, it, or whenever you have a number you're dividing by a fraction, the best thing to do is multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. And therefore, you obtain a period of 4 pi. That means instead of the graph doing this in 2 pi, it's now going to take longer. It's actually going to do that in 4 pi. Um, then the last thing we want to do is determine the x scale. So if we know it takes a revolution of um, 4 pi for it to complete a revolution, what, are, what is going to be the distance between each of those critical points? Well, to do that, all you're simply going to do is take the period and divide it by 4. So I have 4 pi divided by 4, which equals pi. And basically, you can see that I took the period here. I took, I took my scale. And I broke it up into force, right? Already, because I know that's how many critical points is. The only thing I don't know is what is the distance for those critical points? Well, the distance of those critical points is going to be pi. And again, this is not to scale as it is up there, because if this were to scale, you can see from 0 to pi is much larger up here than it is over here, all right? So I'm not really doing it to scale. Um, this would be 2 pi, 3 pi. And then 4 pi. And then we know, hey, at 4 pi, it completes, a, it completes a revolution, right? So let's go ahead and graph what that first period would look like. Well, it's going to start at 0 for sine. It's going to go up to 3 pi, down to intercept, down to the minimum, and back up. OK, then let's just continue our x scale. 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi. Goes up, down, middle. Okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph. Um, that is how you graph when you have a phase shift and or a period of four pi. And actually, what that did is that elongated, right? So you can see the period is actually much longer than it was up there for the parent graph. Now let's go and take a look at this graph where we have y equals negative three um, sine of two x two uh, x pi. Now again, remember amplitude is the absolute value of a. So just because it's negative. That is not going to affect my amplitude. My amplitude is still going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and down 3, 1, 2, 3. 
So it's still going to have the same amplitude. However, the negative is going to do a reflection, which I'll do at the very, very end. Um, but we can determine what the period is in x scale here before all that. So the period, again, is going to be 2 pi divided by b. Well, here you can see that my 2 pi here, or my b, is whatever's being multiplied by x is actually 2 pi. So that becomes 2 pi divided by 2 pi. Well, that's just going to equal 1. Then I do my x scale, which again is going to be your period divided by 4. Well, my period in this case is 1, so I just divide that by 4 and I get 1 fourth. That means the distance from here's my 0, so that's going to be 1 fourth. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half. 1 half plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. And then 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 4 fourths, or just 1. That means my graph is now going to complete one solid period, right? So Instead of the period being 4 pi, like it was in the last example, or the period being 2 pi, now it's completing a period in terms of 1. And again, a lot of students get confused with this because it's not in terms of pi. Well, remember, pi is just an irrational number, right? If you want to think about that, 3.14, so what, 2 times 3.14 is like 6.28. So in the parent graph, you're completing a period in roughly 6.28, where now we're completing a period in 1. So it's being much more condensed, right? It's being tighter, uh, much more condensed. So, uh, what we're going to do in this case here is now we are going to, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, okay. Now let's go in the opposite direction. So instead of going positive, I'm just going to go negative. That's why sometimes I like doing to the left and to the right, uh, just because it's the exact same as to the right, except now it's just being negative. Now, be very, very careful. When the first thing we did was we always went up, right? Down, or intercept, down, up. Right? And if we're going to continue this pattern, that means the first one would be going down, intercept, maximum down. OK? But remember, we have that negative that we have to uh, remind ourselves at. So then what that's telling us is every single point above or below is being reflected about the x-intercept. Now, all the points that are on the x-intercept cannot be reflected. OK? But now what we can do here is now we can graph this all. And you can see now that is going to be the negative. So you just got to make sure when you have an amplitude that uh, a negative, uh, make sure that the amplitude is not changed. However, the reflection will, uh, will affect that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the amplitude, uh, period, and x scale to be able to graph your sine function. Thanks.